So key players fall in fantasy drafts every year. Sometimes it's because they were injured the previous year and are now forgotten about. And a few will just be rookies that your friends don't know. Now, these are the exact players that you want to draft immediately because they're currently great values to target and your league mates have no idea. And one of the players that fits this criteria is Tim Patrick, who currently in fantasy drafts is taken in round 18, which for a lot of your drafts means he's going undrafted. And now this is interesting because he's still a starting wide receiver for the Broncos. Check this out. In March, Benjamin Albright, a Denver Broncos lead inside reporter, ended up stating this in a tweet exchange. Somebody asked, hey, what is Tim Patrick going to do in fantasy? He said, if he's healthy, he's likely to be the wide receiver one. Now that may seem extreme with guys like Jerry, Judy, and Cortland Sutton there, but the Broncos are still invested in Patrick. All right, so Patrick suffered a torn ACL last August. He ended up missing the entire season. And now he's 29 years old and will turn 30 this year in November, which leaves a lot of major question marks. But now here's the thing. Since 2020, Tim Patrick has been a top 50 receiver, but now he goes as the 88th wide receiver in drafts. So there's no downside to drafting him around guys like Nathaniel Dell, Marvin Jones, and Terrace Marshall, even though Patrick by far has the most upside. Take him before other people start to realize he's returning. All right, now let's go to the Patriots backfield where they somewhat recently ended up cutting James Robinson after just giving him a contract a few months ago. And this is great news for Pierre Strong, who is now the clear running back two in New England. Let's discuss. The Patriots took Pierre Strong in the fourth round of the NFL draft last year for multiple reasons. For starters, he was insanely productive. His final year of college, when you look at his rushing yards, nearly 1,700 and his receiving yards of 150, he had over 1,800 total yards. And in his college career, he averaged an insane 7.4 yards per touch. The average is around five and a half yards per touch. And it gets better because when you look at his player profile workout metrics here, he is an elite athlete. When you look at his speed, 95th percentile, his burst, 86th percentile and agility well above average. And he lacks any major threat in competition for RB2 touches. See for yourself. These will be his main competitors for backup touches. You have Ty Montgomery, who is now 31 years old and has just 36 carries since 2019. There's Kevin Harris, who was actually cut by the Patriots last year and then brought back to the practice squad. He's a less efficient runner and a sixth round pick compared to Pierre Strong's draft capital. And then there's guys like JJ Taylor on the depth chart, who has just 58 touches in the last three years. So when you're in these final rounds of your drafts, Pierre Strong often goes undrafted. Take him because he's better than all these guys around him, like Deuce Vaughn, Patterson, and Israel Abba and Akanda. All right, now let's go to a wide receiver who last year was my favorite late round receiver and it paid off. And that guy would be Zay Jones, the Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver. When you look at his regular season last year, set career highs with 82 receptions and 121 targets. Zay Jones ended up finishing as a borderline top 30 receiver in fantasy last year, 31st in fantasy points per game amongst receivers. But now he goes as the wide receiver 55 in drafts, right around players like Sky Moore, which is a mistake because Jones was efficient in 2023. He was 25th in yards after the catch, 30th versus man coverage, and 26th at earning targets. So why is he dropping so far in drafts? Well, it has to do with his competition. He still has Christian Kirk there, but the Jaguars swapped out Marvin Jones and brought in Calvin Ridley. Now, maybe Ridley will be the same guy he was two or three years ago when he was a top five fantasy producer, but there's a decent chance he won't be since he hasn't played football in over a year and a half, which makes Zay Jones even more of a value. So go get Zay Jones now while he's a 12th round pick as opposed to when he becomes an eighth round pick in a few months. And then circle Sam Howell's name because he is the late round quarterback you want who currently goes in round 17. All the current reports out of Washington camp suggest that he is in line to be the QB1. And Howell has the quarterback cheat code in mobility. In his final year of college at USC, he rushed for 828 yards, which was 69 rushing yards per game. And in his one start last year in week 18, he flashed this rushing upside with five carries for 35 yards and a touchdown, about 10 fantasy points alone on the ground. And now Howell is set up for success with a new offensive coordinator in Eric Bieniemy. Bieniemy is the former offensive coordinator for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs the past five years. And Sam Howell has three legit receivers who are great after the catch, making his job easy to pick up passing yards in Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Curtis Samuel. So target Howell late. He goes after Trey Lance, who isn't even going to start, and he goes right next to Mac Jones and Desmond Ritter, even though Howell has much more upside. Now, I'm surprised by this next guy being a value. And that would be Josh Jacobs, who is somehow undervalued because he often goes in the third round of drafts. Even though last year, this wasn't three years ago, this was last year, he led all position players in fantasy points. More than McCaffrey, more than Justin Jefferson, it was Josh Jacobs. Now, here's what you need to know. Jacobs is still in his prime. He's just 25 years old, and he doesn't turn 26 until after the season. And this dude was the number one workhorse running back last year. He had 340 carries and 65 targets. That's 405 total running back opportunities, the most out of any back. And in 2022, he continued his cheat code usage that he saw the previous year. Jacobs was 11th in running back targets and top 10 
again in red zone usage his fantasy cheat codes so put a star next to jacob's name when you see him in round two or three of your drafts and take him over guys like dk metcalf and mark andrews now we stick in the afc and we look at the new england patriots wide receiver tyquan thornton who enters year two thornton's rookie year was limited by a preseason shoulder fracture that ended up making him miss four games and as a rookie it makes your whole progress a little bit slower but he became a full-time player the final five games of last year and you got to see what happened in the far right hand column you'll see his snap shares they went up to 96 percent 90 94 96 and then 54 the final week as he got banged up in the game didn't really matter all that much this comes down to him playing 88 percent of the snaps those final five games it would have been above 93 percent if it wasn't for the last week leaving early and his last full game that he played you started to see the upside Tyquan Thornton had three catches 60 yards and a touchdown 15 fantasy points on seven targets and led his team in receiving that week so that progress as his rookie year ended is something to store in your head and then always remember his one rare trait and that would be his speed as you can see on the player profile workout metrics his 40 yard dash of 428 is the 100th percentile top one percent of all time and his current competition for downfield targets is non-existent juju isn't winning downfield Devonte parker isn't winning downfield and then you have a bunch of rookies in the mario douglas and Keishon booty no this is taekwon thornton's job downfield and we know downfield targets lead to explosive plays in fantasy upside week so take him in round 17 and then you also must know that greg dolchich is currently being undervalued the second year tight end in denver dolchich was a top 10 tight end in 50 percent of his starts as a rookie but now he goes as the 15th tight end off the board in drafts let's discuss look he was great last year in his rookie year he was top five in tight end usage number three in downfield tight end usage and top 10 in production per catch but one thing held him back and that would be he ranked 33rd amongst all tight ends in catchable targets just 70 percent of his targets were catchable meaning that 30 percent were not catchable and this was due to russell wilson having a career low season but the good news is that last year was worst case scenario with the poor quarterback play and only seeing two receiving touchdowns he still finished 17th in fantasy points per game and now his head coach is the great sean payton so take doltage late in your drafts all right now similar to josh jacobs another early round rare value is tony pollard who currently goes at the end of the second round or even the third round next to some quarterbacks and guys like t higgins i'd rather have pollard usually goes outside the top 20 picks sometimes outside the top 25 picks but as you can see on pollard right here on the fantasy blueprint he's my 16th overall player all right now here's what you need to know pollard last year was a top 10 running back in fantasy points per game despite going out there and only seeing 50 percent of the snaps only on the field for half the game and it's because pollard dominated by earning six yards per touch and there's more good news because pollard has no serious competition with ezekiel elliott cut and his remaining competition is ronald jones who has just 18 touches since 2021 and then six round rookie deuce vaughn who was electric in college but there's a good chance he only got drafted because his dad is a coach for the cowboys now we must keep in mind that there's a chance that zeke could re-sign maybe by the time you're watching this he's on a different team so then it's not a big deal but all the cowboys actions suggest that pollard is the guy and zeke last year wasn't great career low efficiency as a rusher 62nd overall and just 3.9 yards per touch 55th overall and this is an extremely small sample but in three career games without ezekiel elliott tony pollard averages 28.9 fantasy points per game so there's an early round running back going undervalued now let's hit a late round guy and that's the rookie running back out of Tulane and Tajay Spears who is the clear backup now to Derrick Henry and despite being a valuable handcuff behind a run first offense in Tennessee Tajay Spears goes as the running back 54 in round 15 and here's what you need to know Spears was dominant in college he accounted for 33 percent of his offense's production at Tulane which is more than guys like Saquon Barkley had during their college career and this is what it led to it led to Spears totaling nearly 1600 rushing yards and over 250 receiving yards meaning that he had over 1800 yards just a year ago and check this out over his final eight games of his college career he had over 120 rushing yards in each game not even counting receiving yards to end his career now there are some clear concerns with Tajay and for this we can consult our favorite doctor on Twitter sports MD analysis look Tajay Spears it came out that he has arthritis in his knee and bad knee cartilage and then when we read through the rest of these points point number two it shows that guys with the same injury like Todd Gurley have shorter careers in their past because no ACL means that your knee is going to break down faster so this isn't great if you're playing dynasty fantasy football but for this year specifically there's not thought to be any major concerns for the next year to three years of his career which means he's a great handcuff and an undervalued handcuff because people are overreacting to his injury news in the 15th round all right then we head to green bay in their wide receiver core with a guy in Jaden reed who is massively undervalued right now right now his average draft position when you take into account all the drafting sites is the 17th round of drafts and this is a mistake because according to packers beat reporter andy herman on twitter Jaden reed is already getting the wide receiver one reps out of the slot with the starting unit so he's already the starting slot receiver and he has the versatility to play all of the positions all three wide receiver positions and that's not all because reed was a strong college producer he earned 
25% of his team's targets. He saw 39% of the team's touchdowns, and he was a special team's weapon. And not to mention, his competition in Green Bay is weak. Obviously, there's Christian Watson, who's great. He is not included in these weak competition pieces. It's guys like Romeo Dobbs, who were 59th in efficiency last year. Samori Tori, who only has five career catches. And then he's competing with guys like Dontavian Wicks, who was a fifth round rookie this year. Maybe he has some upside, but it's going to be Jaden Reed over him. So as of right now, Reed is the number one wide receiver value in all of fantasy football. Now for our next undervalued player, we have to go to the Dolphins draft where they only had four total picks and their second pick, which was a third round pick, they spent it on running back Devon A-Chain. All right, here's what you need to know about A-Chain. As Dov points out right here on Twitter, he ran a 4-3-2 40 time, the most of any drafted rookie running back this year. And he now joins a really fast, he's a fast player joining a fast Miami team. But he's not just fast. He actually put this speed to use in college because he was a strong producer at A&M. Last year, over 1,100 rushing yards, nearly 200 receiving yards. He had 1,300 yards last year and 11 touchdowns. But there is one major concern with A-Chain and that would be his size at 5'8 and just 188 pounds. There's not a great track record of these sized running backs paying off. But two things might offset this. The third round investment that the Dolphins put in him, that's pretty good capital. And the fact that he landed in Miami, an offense that loves speed in the first place. Because head coach Mike McDaniel's offense thrives on speed and he loves fast running backs. Just look at Raheem Mostart, a faster running back who found a lot of success in top 10 weeks with Mike McDaniel in San Francisco. But A-Chain is the faster and much younger version of Mostart now. Take him in round 11. The one disclaimer would be by the time you're watching this, if the Dolphins sign somebody like Dalvin Cook, well, then all of this isn't as, as important. All right, now there's two players left and the one wide receiver we'll talk about is one of the biggest values that you'll ever find in fantasy. But before we get there, I want to let you know about the fantasy blueprint that hundreds of people have already acquired for 2023 because if you want to win your league, it's the tool that you need. It will have every single thing you need to prepare, not just for your draft, but even after your draft, heading all the way into the fantasy playoffs with weekly tools. Just follow the two simple steps with the link in the description below to get your fantasy blueprint for 2023. And here's the thing. This is risk-free because if you don't make your fantasy playoffs, I'll just refund your minimum deposit to get the blueprint, which is five to $10, depending on when you're watching this completely risk-free so that you can go in there and take advantage of the tools. So be sure to get your blueprint down below. Now let's get back to the video. And that wide receiver I was talking about with immense upside is Rondell Moore, who is a must because when he was healthy in 2022, Rondell Moore averaged 14.1 points on eight and a half targets in those healthy games, which means during this time, he was actually a top 12 wide receiver in fantasy football, right next to Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Hopkins, even ahead of AJ Brown. And now with DeAndre Hopkins release, Rondell is the clear wide receiver two, and he'll even compete with Marquise Brown for wide receiver one usage. Now, of course, there's bad news because the Cardinals offense is expected to be the worst this year because of their quarterback situation. Kyler's going to miss at least half the year, maybe even heck the entire year, which leaves these guys to be the quarterback. Jeff Driscoll, David Blau, rookie Clayton Toon, maybe Colt McCoy if he's healthy. But this is already baked into Rondell's price. He goes as the wide receiver 62. After rookie Rasheed Rice, who might be the wide receiver three at best for the Chiefs, Romeo Dobbs, who's the wide receiver three for the Packers. I mean, there's upside in Rondell Moore's skill set and ability. So take Moore in round 13 and now take this late round tight end. Because if you don't get Doltich in the middle to later rounds, we'll just spend your last pick on Jelani Woods, the Colts freak tight end who currently goes undrafted. And here's why I call him a freak. He's an athletic freak. According to player profiler's workout metric, he has a 94th percentile speed score, 95th percentile burst, and 98th percentile catch radius. And oh yeah, not to mention he's six foot seven and 252 pounds, a monster. Now he's not just this freak who can't do anything. No, he was solid as a rookie. Woods was 15th in tight end efficiency and fourth in average target distance. He was getting the downfield usage. All right, so now check this out. Check out his routes run. You could see he had four, four, 11 to start the year. Nothing crazy, but he gets 21 and he had 20 plus three times. There's a 24 and there's a 25. Now it's important because in those three games where he actually saw usage getting 20 plus routes, he averaged 12 fantasy points per game in 5.7 targets per game, which if we look last year at tight end finishes, 12 fantasy points per game would slot in right here below Mark Andrews and above Dallas Goddard as a top five tight end in fantasy who currently goes undrafted. Now that's not to say he's just automatically going to be a top five guy, but you don't have to pay anything for him. And he clearly has that type of upside. So take him with your last pick. So now these are 13 players that are clearly going undervalued in drafts. So you want to take these guys, but there's seven players that you want to make sure you don't take. Let your dumb friends take them instead. And this video right here calls out those exact players. And before you watch that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be sure to see all the other content on your feed to make sure you win your fantasy league.